Hi, Jeffrey. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing well. A little tired, jet lagged, two days of speaking, but I'm doing pretty well. Great. Uh, last year, Microsoft has enforced a strategy about Azure ecosystem. Do you think, what do you think about this strategy? So I think that cloud computing is inevitable and it's just going to happen. But I do, and I think we're also in the infancy of it. So it's going to take a long time for it to mature. Um, you know, at Wintelect, we've been working with some customers who are adopting Azure now, and uh, you know, there's some there's some rough edges to that. And if you look at some of the competition, there's some rough edges to that as well. I mean, pricing is kind of shocking to people. You know, Really, in order to load balance and get scale, you have to create stateless servers, which a lot of people are not that familiar with doing. You've got to keep your state separate from your computation stuff. Um, I do think that there's a lot of good stuff that's in Azure, and um, that's why I'm adopting it very heavily myself, um, producing courses on it and whatnot. But um, it's, I'm in it for the long haul, and, uh, and I'm still keeping my day job. You know? Okay, so I, I, you are involved in uh, Azure development? Yeah, I have been working for the past, I don't know, maybe eight months now on building an Azure class for Wintelect, and um, I have met with the team on numerous times, and have built all kinds of demos and slides, and then have worked with customers with real-world experience with it. Um, so it is, it's the new technology that I have decided to really focus a lot of my time on. Because Azure is very complex technology, there is a lot of stuff. Are you involved in specific stuff or in general? Well, for the class, we want to cover everything. So um, I think the most interesting part of Azure for most people will be the storage services. The storage services could be used, well, let me, let me go back a little bit. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of misunderstanding, I think, as to what Azure is. Azure is really a branding name from my perspective. Mm -hmm. And then it, there is a bunch of technologies that Microsoft shoves the word Azure in front of, and they're really disparate technologies. They, they can be used independently of one another. So the storage one, I think, is the one that's most interesting. People can use the storage from the cloud, but they can also use it from your on-premise computing. And it's just a way to put data up in the cloud. Microsoft replicates it three times. So really, statistically speaking, you can get away without ever backing up your data. And it's, it's very scalable and high performance and it's some good stuff. So a lot of my class is on that. Then there's SQL Azure, which is a relational database up in the cloud. And you can talk to that. And also, you can use that from on-premise stuff. You don't have to be running your services in the cloud to leverage these features. Then there is the compute service, so you can put your code up in the cloud if you want to, and then access the storage service or SQL Azure to get to your data. And then there's the App Fabric services. The App Fabric services, which uh, there's two that are shipping now, which is the service bus and the access control service. The service bus is really just a technology that allows two computers to connect going through firewalls and NATs. Um, but the, the computers can be in the cloud, but they don't have to be in the cloud. They can be in your house. And then there's the access control service, which is basically an identity store up in the cloud to do authentication. And they're all individual things that you can piece together any way you want to, and you can use them in the cloud or not use them in the cloud. So I do think there's a lot of value there, but I think a lot of people don't understand that. A lot of, I think a lot of people think you have to write a service, you've got to put it in the cloud, you have to use these other things, but that's absolutely not true. There's been a big learning experience for me, and then how to spin this courseware, and how to talk, talk to customers, and to pick and choose the right pieces at the right time. It's, it's been fun. It's been fun. I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Since uh, uh, the last PDC, yeah. uh, Microsoft has revealed a new feature for the next version of C-Sharp and VB language, Visual Studio, I think. As an expert about asynchrony, can you give us your position about this technology? Sure. Um, I, for years now, have had a, a helper class that I wrote myself called the Async Enumerator, which is part of my power threading library. And I have been making that available for free to people for the past several years. It has actually gotten a lot of traction, and there's a lot of companies who use it in their production software. Um, because of the success that it has had, Microsoft has really noticed that 
and they are taking the basic ideas of it and they're now integrating it into VB and C Sharp, as you say, and there's a class library component as well. Um, so, I mean, I think it's great because, I mean, it's the technology that I've been using for a long time now, and they're just integrating it in a little bit better into the languages and the platform so it's a little bit more seamless. Um, I think it will really change asynchronous programming and really be able to bring it to the masses because it simplifies a lot of the hard work. Yes, but uh, some people, uh, I've tried uh, this, this uh, uh, CTP and uh, some uh, are not agree about debugging experiences because uh, when you, you, you execute uh, the await code, uh, the debugger uh, switch to uh, another part of the, your code because it's like a continuation. Have you an opinion about, about that? And can you tell us uh, which uh, behavior we must have? Sure. I mean, with my async enumerator, I have the same problem too where you issue an asynchronous operation and then in my code, my version you would say yield return and then you're, as you're single stepping in the debugger you're going to return back to the caller you're not going to execute the line below the yield return. Um, and so I've been dealing with that problem for years and I've come up with some tricks to try to work around that. It's a common thing is to, I just move down a line and I say run to cursor mm -hmm. and then the debugger will run until it gets to the next line of code. That's a, an easy way to do it. Um, I think Microsoft can do a much better job than I can because they also own the debugger. So they can integrate into the debugger all kinds of tips and tricks to when you get to the await keyword and hit F10, it could set a breakpoint on what would happen next and then just run to the breakpoint. I mean, with multi-threaded software, there's always multiple threads running through your code at the same time and the debugger's going to ping pong and back and forth in the source window between those things. So um, another trick that I use a lot is I go and I freeze some threads to take them out of the picture so that I can step through the thread that I particularly care about. Um, some of the stuff can be more integrated into the debugger and make the experience better and I think um, I don't think it would be too bad. I think you get a lot of benefit for this um, pain and I think they can come up with things to alleviate the pain. Maybe it won't be in the next version, maybe it'll be in the version after that where it really gets better. But uh, I think they're going down the right path. And for you, why and when uh, we must use this new technology when it will be shipped? And uh, for, for, for instance, in Silverlight, all code is async. There is no synchronous call because uh, yeah. there is danger uh, about the browser. And for you, about your experiences, uh, now we must uh, program all the time in asynchronous uh, mode or sometimes in synchronous mode? Well, you program asynchronously for two reasons. You either want to keep your user interface responsive, or that's for a client-side app, or for a server-side app typically, I mean maybe for a client too, but mostly for a server-side app, you really want scalability. You want to be able to handle lots of clients that are making requests into your server without the server falling over on its knees. But there's a large class of applications that don't care about either of those things. There's a lot of tools and utilities, there are command line tools and utilities where you just don't care, so then do everything synchronously. Um, you know, I think also, you know, going back to the debugging thing for a minute, if you can write the code synchronously and debug it and get it working, and then with this new await stuff and my async enumerator stuff, it's pretty easy to take that code and then turn it into async. So if you already have it fully functioning and then just make it async, there's a lot less debugging that you will have to do. Um, and then that debugger issue that you brought up is much less of an issue. So, no, I don't think everything's going to be async. <laughs> to get back to the, the last question you asked, not everything is going to be async, certainly. Um, and then there's also people who build servers that maybe are just hit by everybody in the company, you only have 100 people in the company, and so it doesn't have to be either. Um, but I do think, uh, to tie it into Azure, um, or into any kind of cloud service, when you are building services that you're going to host in the cloud and now you're charged per compute hour, then the more servers you have, the more expensive that is. 
So what a lot of companies have done in the past is they've been building these non-scalable servers and they've been able to get away with that because they throw more servers at it with a load balancer in front. Well now that's going to cost more money to do that if you move it to the cloud. So making it async to reduce the number of servers, I think that's a pretty good combination right there. Yes, uh, And so I, I think the async, I think async works well with the cloud and makes the cloud actually more appealing because it'll be cheaper. Thank you very much for these advice and uh, maybe for the next year. Yeah, maybe. Thank you, Jeffrey. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs>